Occasionally, there's, there might be benefits in a study to having different numbers uh, per group. So, for example, if chlorum was seen as a treatment that might give nasty adverse effects, it might be, there might be a benefit to having a smaller number of animals in the chlorum group than the control group. So if we go back to the simple experiment we had with just comparing chlorum with control without the strains and uh, assume that perhaps we'd like to have twice as many mice in the control group as the chlorum group, so to minimise, well, to reduce the number of mice that are exposed to the new treatment. Then it is possible, again, to adapt the calculation. I won't go into justify how this was done, but you can set the ratio of a number in the larger group, which is, for us, controls, to the smaller group. We'll set that ratio to be 2 here. And the formulae just builds in this R value, the ratio value. So we've just got R plus 1 on the top and R on the bottom. And so if we put that into a value of R2 into the calculation that we had originally, where we were trying to get a difference of 0.5 in red blood cell count, we come out with needing that the number of mice in the smaller group, here the chlorum group, is going to be 7.14 and we would round that up to be eight. So we need eight mice in the chlorum group, so that's a bit smaller than we had before. We had 10 mice before, um, but we need double that in the control group. So we need 16 mice in the control group, and in total, that's going to mean we need 24 mice. So there's always a bit of a price to pay. We're going to need more mice than we had before, um, but fortunately, we're going to need less mice in the group that were treated actively. So you can play with this a bit, but you can't obviously reduce the number that are going to get the active treatment too much if you say, OK, well, I'll have kind of five times as many in the control group and really restrict the number in the chlorine group. You would find you'd, in the total number of mice would be quite a lot more to achieve that, and you need to think about whether that's, it's actually worthwhile to do this because you are going to be using a larger sample size overall. The most efficient design has got the same number of animals in each group, um, so it's only if there's another reason to reduce, have one group smaller than the other, that it's worth considering.